All right, the moment you've been waiting for. My number one Netflix original TV show is. Well, hey everybody, Dan Drake here, and I'm gonna count down my top 10 favorite Netflix original TV shows. I'm going to try and avoid these obvious ones because I mean, Netflix has like, 100 billion original things and they're all really good um there you go i like these things too so whether you've been snuggled up on the couch in your pjs for the better part of two weeks or you're a thousand years in the future learning about youtube and history class i see you let's go over my top 10 favorite bingeable guilty pleasures here we go now you see kids humans used to sit on their couches and watch three four, maybe 10 hours of content at a time. That was called binging. The collective wisdom and knowledge of the entire human race was in our pockets, and we decided to spend time like this. On a related note, we also used to have a thing called trees. Now, these are in no particular order, but we'll start with this, the circle. I love the circle. There's something about the way these people are interacting through the screen, some of them being real and some of them being fake, that I just can't take my eyes off of. I'm even watching The Circle Brazil right now, and I can't speak Portuguese. A lot of these real people are just lovable characters that I enjoyed getting to know over the course of the season. And I love the way it makes me think about how I interact with people online, the kind of front or profile. I put out there to the world as almost a wall. It's almost like an apartment room that I can't escape. The circle shows us what could be if we let down our walls and really let people get to know the real us, the kind of community and vulnerability that can be there when we all, well, to borrow from MTV, when people stop being polite and start getting real, the real world. I've really enjoyed it, and so if you're looking for some reality TV flair, but you've already, you know, cut the cord, uh, The Circle is a great choice for you. All right, let's talk about the next pick, which is Lock and Key. Now, I've been a huge fan of Lock and Key for a long time, for several reasons. Here's the first. It's based on a series of graphic novels that are fantastic. Number two, those graphic novels were actually written by Joe Hill, who is, drum roll please, Stephen King's son. Stephen King, if you can't see the books behind me, is my favorite author, and his son is just as good. And so this series of graphic novels was excellent. And so coming to the show, I was very excited to see that I think they did a really, really great job of translating the inventive and unique storytelling into the TV medium. So if you're into that supernatural Stephen King-esque kind of thing, I think you will really dig Lock and Key. Next on the list, Russian Doll. It's kind of like Groundhog Day meets Orange is the New Black, kind of, with Amy Poehler's sensibility of comedy timing. It's definitely an adult show, but I feel like it's also really charming. Like, I just really enjoyed that idea of revisiting the same day over and over, trying to get a certain thing right. If you like darker comedies with adult language and creative inventive storytelling, then you will love Russian Doll. Next up, The Stranger. Now this is a show that's based on a Harlan Coben novel. Co Harlan Coben? Harlan? But that author specializes in mysteries. These kind of generic James Patterson mystery-esque novels are, you know, not everyone's cup of tea. But if you like them, you will really like The Stranger. It starts with a very interesting premise when an absolute stranger walks up to a character and seems to know all of their deepest, darkest secrets. I mean, talk about scary. What can secrets do to a person, to a family, and to an entire community? It's really intriguing for a, you know, generic-ish mystery. But for Buffy and Angel fans, Giles is in it. So, you know, huh? huh? I mean, I watched it for that reason alone. I think if you like that sort of thing, if you like mysteries, you will really like The Stranger. And the ending, I'd say, is a little controversial. So if you've seen it, let me know in the comments what you thought of the ending. All right, next on the list is a little bit of a guilty pleasure. This is a show I watched with my wife, like a lot of these shows, and uh, probably not something I would have picked if I was picking on my own, but I'm really glad that we watched this, and it's Santa Clarita Diet. 
I really like the lead actors in this, Drew Barrymore and, uh, 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 what's his name? He's in everything. Oh, right. Timothy Oliphant. Oliphant. Oliphant? Oliphant. Tim Timothy. This is a really, really fun show that centers around zombies, but with a fun, lighthearted take on that. The show is hilarious, uh, has a great supporting cast. There's definitely some Buffy the Vampire Slayer influence in that you can deal with the supernatural, but in a funny way. There are also some great guest stars, including Nathan Fillion. If you're in the mood to laugh something funny, but you still really like, you know, supernatural stuff, then I highly recommend Santa Clarita Diet. Next is one of my favorite shows on Netflix that a lot of people haven't watched, and that's Dead to Me. Christina Applegate is a tour de force. Jeff and I can't imagine what you're going through. Well, it's like if Jeff got hit by a car and died suddenly and violently. Like that. And this is another example where kind of knowing very little about it is actually helpful because the show is just twisty and turny and there is a major revelation at the end of the first episode or at the beginning of the second, somewhere in there, that just shifts what you thought you knew about this show completely on its head. It asks really interesting questions about the nature of, again, secrets and what it means to grieve a loved one, what it means to accept someone, flaws and all, and have friendships in adulthood. It's very nuanced and layered underneath the surface, and also very funny at times. And almost every episode ends on a cliffhanger and it just propels you into the next one. Me and my wife watched it really fast and we really enjoyed it. So again, if you like darker comedies, but a little less dark than Russian Doll and foul mouth blondes, then I think you'll like Dead to Me. All right, this pick is one of my favorites that's also pretty lesser known. It's an amazing cast, and so odds are if you're a fan of any of these people in the show, you probably know about it, uh, but maybe not, and that's Friends from College. Okay, get this. Friends from College stars Keegan-Michael Key, Colby Smulders, Nat Faxon, Fred Savage, and many others. As someone who's a little bit younger than them, but who has a family and a kid, I totally identify with missing the feel of what it's like to have friendship in your early 20s and in college. Of course, there's drama and they make each other cry and there's, you know, messed up relationships. People are married but having affairs and adult situations like that. But it's interesting to see them navigate that and try to hold on to friendships from college that people don't normally hold on to nowadays. It's not like the greatest achievement in cinema or anything, but I really enjoyed it. And so if this sounds like something you would really enjoy, then check it out, Friends from College. All right, gotta talk about Godless, an amazing Western. And I'm not like some huge Western fan or anything, but Godless is extremely entertaining, namely because of Jeff Daniels. Now, I love Jeff Daniels. Ever since I saw him in, uh, you know, Dumb and Dumber, and uh, in the newsroom, in Squid and the Whale. I mean, Jeff Daniels is an amazing actor, and he is never better than in Godless. This limited series from 2017 also has a stellar cast. Besides Jeff Daniels, there's Scoot McNary, who's one of my favorites from Halt and Catch Fire, and uh, Merritt Weaver, who pops up every once in a while in something, and I'm always like, dang, who is that? She's amazing. And also Michelle Dockery, who's from that... Um, British show everybody likes, um, um, Cranford. If you're a fan of Westerns or of Jeff Daniels, I highly recommend Godless. Next up is Maniac, and woo -hoo -hoo, is this a good show. I mean, this was developed and directed by Kerry Fukunawa, who was the main director for season one of True Detective. That's when he first got on my radar, which is, you know, season one is a masterpiece. It's got Emma Stone, it's got Jonah Hill, it's got Justin Thoreau, it is a fantastically weird series, okay? It's it's amazing. If you like psychological thrillers, dark comedies, uh, weird pharmaceutically based trips, the acting is superb, the storyline is intriguing and mysterious, and the directing is just unbelievable. If you're interested in that kind of thing, I think it's for you. Okay, so before we get to my number one pick, I wanted to jump in really quick and go over a couple honorable mentions. Now, these are things that I actually haven't seen yet, but I wanted to go over them uh, just so that you know that they exist, and so maybe we could even watch them for the first time together. This is also a great time to like this video and subscribe if you haven't yet. 
Dracula. Dark, safe, self-made, and living with yourself. So uh, if you've seen any of those and you want to tell me about them in the comments, go for it. All right, the moment you've been waiting for. My number one Netflix original TV show is BoJack Horseman. I love BoJack Horseman. And I was surprised that my brother told me that a lot of people haven't seen this. It's an adult cartoon, true, but it is really, really insightful and brilliant. And it tells a really heartfelt, nuanced, and vulnerable story. One of my favorite things about BoJack Horseman, beyond just the brilliance of the writing and the storytelling and the narrative itself, like the plot, is how clever it is in the background. So the whole thing, BoJack Horseman is a horse, and in this fictional world, like, certain animals are anthropomorphic and live right alongside humans. And so that's right for like certain animal puns. Like in the background, you'll see a movie poster for like Mission in Purable or something. And there's like Tom Cat instead of Tom Cruise. Like it's stuff like that that really makes the show super clever. And the dialogue is super fast. Like it's one of those shows where you might watch the same episode twice and catch different jokes because they just come now again, it's an adult cartoon, and so there are some adult things in there. This isn't something to watch with the family or with the kids, but I think that the cleverness of the show far outweighs any vulgarity that might offend people. At least that's, I mean, at least that's for me. So there you have it, that was the list, and uh, you can like and subscribe, and you're not here anymore. You clicked away a long time ago. Okay, I'll be back.